Hey there, Shauna Karish coming to you from Via Nova uh, with another Ask Shauna Answer. Okay, this one comes from Nicole and um, Nicole said, Dear Shauna, thanks a lot for your answer the last time. It made me very happy. You sure have lots of interesting stories to tell. May I ask another more practical question, please? Yes. Uh, among other things, I trained two Shetland ponies to follow a moving target like it was a magnet. For a long time, I didn't notice when they were pinning their ears. They have short ears and huge fluffy manes, which can cover their ears. I And I wasn't paying uh, close attention to their expression. Back then, I was kind of preoccupied with coordinating myself, coordinating my own movements, the target, the clicking, the feeding, etc., uh, and I focused on getting a good performance and I didn't even think I should watch their expression carefully since I was using positive reinforcement and this was no exercise, uh, this was no exercise in despooking or the like. I felt like on the safe side, uh, in the emotional department. That was naive. Well, lesson learned. Over time, the grumpy expression became more obvious, but until I saw it on video, I wasn't aware of how bad and consistent it really was. I was kind of shocked when I saw it on video. I think I really trained it into the exercise. The ponies put the grumpy expression on the movement I presented the target. And when I was presenting the target, let me make sure I didn't miss some of that. Okay, presenting the target, uh, just like an actor. Do you think they... Uh, looked happy and friendly the moment I uh, marked and treated. I find it very curious that it's like their grumpiness has switched on and off by the target, like an actor. Sorry, I jumped around a little bit there. Do you think they, the ponies, do you think they feel grumpy inside when they can switch it on and off like a flash, in a flash? Uh, can the expression be just another trained behavior detached from the feeling normally expressed. Maybe the ponies put pinned it pinned their ears because at some point they started to feel like they were chasing the target and it is just their chasing face. Or is there more to it? Is there a way of changing the expression of feelings after becoming such a routine or is the target poisoned forever? Would exchanging the target and restarting the exercise from scratch help? Looking back, I believe food anxiety might have been an issue too. I didn't really address relaxation around food that much because I was fine with them not mugging me. Um, so I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't realize they shouldn't have a problem with it either. Sigh. <laughs> Another lesson learned. But is that the only possible cause? How else could the grumpiness while following the target be for prevented with other horses? I sure don't want to repeat the same mistake in the future. Please share, share your experiences and expertise on this matter. Okay, that's a good question, Nicole. It's There's a lot of a lot of pieces you touched on that actually really uh, address it, to be honest with you. Um, for is, one thing, I think when we teach them to follow the target, we can have them... Uh, when we have them following the target, we can indeed, it can feel like that we're, the food is leaving. You know what I mean? You're, they're like, you taught me to touch it. Now you're making it impossible to touch it. And if food is a, a little bit of food anxiety is part of it, it represents the food and you're taking the food from them. You know, so it can trigger some old thoughts if they've had food anxiety it could and and in social situations that's not uncommon that they have been you know displaced from the food or or there maybe hasn't been enough for everybody to, you know all kinds of things so i think that that is actually a very real contender in this in this big picture and i think that it is so that can be part of it so it could just be that it's moving and i can't get it and i you know that just seems unfair i don't know what you're doing so that's one piece to it so if that's the piece to it or a way that I can prevent it in the future, what I start doing from very early on, I start teaching them that pursuing the target is good enough. So what I might do, I might have the target over here. I click as they're going towards the target, not even touching the target. I need to teach them that touching the target is the goal, but I also, so I do do plenty of touching the target, but then I really start doing enough. I, I kind of really mix it up which is pursuing the target, going towards the target, that that is good enough. And that is a point that I'm going to reinforce as well. So they, they learn that it's pursue the target. If I get there, then I hold. 
but pursuing the target is really just as important as getting to it's just as viable or salient as as a a, a reinforcement for them so i think that that's a really important part that i try to teach people to do early on and and teach the horses that it's okay just just try to get to the target it's okay that you don't you know, I, I do it early. So their intent is to get there, but I click early and go, that's good enough. So that is one thing that you can do for that. Um, another thing I think is important to keep in mind. I mean, I think it's going beyond that now. I think you have chained it in to the behavior. So they think this is part of the behavior. So we go like this and that's how we get it. And, and what they're really thinking inside, we don't really know. I don't know if they're really actually grumpy inside or if it's just an expression. So I don't know that part. We can never really know that part. And I'm a little cautious about, you know, I've had horses that as they start training, they start kind of putting their ears back and people wanting to teach them not to. And I'm like, well, that's all well and good. But if it truly is a precursor, it is, it is communication to say I'm not in a good place. We want to know that, you know, that's really information that we want to know. So I don't want to train that. I don't want to teach them to look like this when they're about to take my head off. I would rather them go, I'm not happy. And I could go, I get it. Okay, let's come up with a new plan. So there's there's a little cautionary tale in that part. But I think that, um, so I don't necessarily want to train it out of them if it is genuine. But we don't always know what it means. But I do know if I, like, I love crossword puzzles. I love puzzles. I love Sudoku. I love, I love word games. I like all those things. But if you watch me doing one, you would probably see me going, what is it? You know, and I'm, I'm thinking and I truly am concentrating. It is not an excuse, though, because years back can mean a whole lot of things. And we don't necessarily know what it means. So I try to look at the more of the picture. I do the it does because I've worked with a lot of cow horses um, that they are very serious in that way. And they tend to be very demonstrative with it, but then they just stop and they're back to being bright and soft and, and happy. And it's so I think that that's not always you know meaning that they're unhappy or that they're grumpy it can really be concentrating but there's a lot of people that put it under that guy so I'm like no that's bad you know and and they'll they'll kind of say that yeah that's just their concentration phase so I think I don't at the other things the other body parts are telling me it's bigger than that and so I think that that is important consideration and and you're on to all of these pieces so it's not all unusual I mean, it's all not brand new. You're really thinking really well through it. So, and, and you know what? Even if somebody said, okay, you're going on vacation tomorrow. You're going to go anywhere in the world you want for two weeks. Where do you want to go? I'd probably go, oh, you know, and I would get, I would have to think about it. And I would probably look all, I'd be very excited, but I would also look rather concentrating. So that's just one avenue that it could be. And I, I do think that maybe in the beginning, if there was a little bit of tension with the food and then, you know, they're thinking I'm supposed to touch a target, the target's leaving. I don't understand. How do I get the food? So working with the relaxation around food, that'll be one piece that's going to help quite a bit. So the food itself, we can kind of rule that out as being something that feels sparse to them or limited. I think the other piece that's really important is the um, teaching them pursuing the target is good enough. So those are pieces that can sure help. But I think at this point in time, you have definitely got them thinking this is how we do it and this is how it works. So I think the best thing to do is to go back. Typically, I go back to the earliest stages and say, so if you want them to chase the target like a magnet, but what I would do is I would move it. I, I would start going back and doing the reinforcing them for going towards the target and then so they get the idea. I get reinforced just going towards it. I'm still a foot away. I'm still two feet away, but I'm, I'm pursuing it. And then the next thing I would do is just move it a little bit. So it's not very far, but try to move them as they're going towards it without the grumpiness. Now, this is something that you'll have to check. When you send them to the target, even a stationary target that's not moving, and you start reinforcing them on their way to the target, do they go towards that target with their ears back or not? And that would kind of also tell you something so what you want to do is create if they if it is so ingrained that they think the target is grumpy i mean the target is pinned ears and all of that whether it's grumpy or not we don't necessarily know unless there's more but i then i would go back to 
ideally, I would go back to saying, well, let's just get in a more soft place. I would satiate them before the session so that they've had some session going on. There's a number of horses that you take them out right away and they're like, I'm just so busy to get started. They can be a little intense at first. So I want, I want it to start soft. I want to start with soft, quiet stuff. I want the session to get underway. And then those horses tend to be where once the session's underway, they can get softer. I want, I want to see that we can get there right away. So if, that, if that's their nature is a little bit, we start a little intense and then we get softer as we go, then I wouldn't do the target right away. I would do some other stuff, work on things and look for the relaxation, look for the softness, but do some stuff and help them, whatever can help them be relaxed. Maybe it's, they're better in the afternoon than the morning. You know, maybe they're, you know, figure out that time when they tend to be less intense and, and more relaxed. And then I would work on the target and see if you can't get them to just touch the target in a softer manner. Maybe you're not even holding it. Maybe you set it on the ground. Maybe you put it, maybe they go to a stationary target easier than you holding the target. See if there's anywhere in there that they have a softer disposition to the target and they don't, you know, maybe it's the movement of the target that's really triggered it. Is there any way that you can create it softer? I would go back and treat them like it's all new again. It'll go faster. It'll go faster in their comprehension. It may go slower in the looking for the softness. And even sometimes if I have a horse and they go up and they go, and then I see them go, I'll take that. <laughs> you know, as they soften, any moment it's softer, softening, the act of softening, so that you're shaping them to have a softer disposition and intensity about the target. You can use a different target and create a different target. Um, but you may find that has the same behavior when you do the same thing with the target or they are doing the same thing with the target. It just may transfer to this, to the next behavior or the next, the next item that you've chosen as a target. So that is something you can try, but it's not poisoned forever. You can, you can go back and you can change it, but you do need to, to take it down quite a bit and think, when can I get it softer? How can I get them more relaxed? How can I get the training in general to maybe be more relaxed? There's a real tendency for us people that we look at everything and think it's an activity. We want to do this activity. And so the horse thinks training is an activity. So it makes it harder to relax. They think, what do I need to do? I need to do something. And they can kind of get manic almost with it. So I think uh, being sure that we, we blend in the doing stuff with the standing quietly. The doing stuff and the standing quietly. And standing quiet isn't the same as standing relaxed. So they can stand quiet like this, but that's not relaxed. So we want to really see them start to go. And if this is how they stand, you know, that's where they stand. And pretty soon you, you maybe feed them a bit. When they kind of soften a little bit, they get more relaxed. Another idea that I have in there is a lot of times when we're working with horses, when they're most relaxed is actually when they're chewing because they're being satiated. So we, we, we trigger them into this seeking place. So we get them thinking, what do I need to do? I want to earn the food. How do I get the food? And, and so we kind of activate this, this let's do something. What do I need to do to get there? As opposed to just thinking, I just hang out and <laughs> it happens. And I want them to think it, it, it just happens easily. So I, a lot of times I've noticed when like especially like brand new horse doing it. And they're thinking, what do I need to do to get the food? And you have, you're thinking, I need to teach you the manners, but I need to make it successful. But when they're chewing, they tend to be the most relaxed. So I'll give them a big handful of food and you'll see them kind of go, and they soften because they're chewing. And, they're, and once they're done, they're back to going, what do I need to do to get the next one? So I think that's important to recognize that. And if when they're chewing, they're quieter, you might have them chewing and then present the target you know, just a little bit ahead of them where they go to the target, but they're still chewing and not feeling so desperate. But that's a lot of times I shape the relaxation during the chewing process until I can feed and, and I'll feed again. And they're like, you know, their little cheeks are getting full and I'll feed again. And then that pretty soon I start fading out needing to do that, but they start learning it's plentiful. And, it, and it's, I don't just standing here can get me reinforced as opposed to thinking I need to do something and I'm a little desperate to figure out what that is. Anyway, so I hope that that helped you. There's a lot of pieces in there and it's a great question and it's it's a common kind of thing that people get themselves stuck in. So I think it's, I appreciate that you asked that and I appreciate that you keep asking because I enjoy that. You can always ask questions. All right, thanks Nicole, that was a great one. All right, if you or anybody else has more questions, want to ask questions or 
whatever it might be, you can go to shaunacarish.com. That is my website. If you just search Shauna Karish, you'll find shaunacarish.com, but you also find vianovatraining.com. And those two websites are together. And on there, you'll see a tab that says Ask Shauna. You also see a tab that says podcast. And so the podcast, there's lots of great um, episodes of the podcast called Equine Clicker 101 that covers a whole slew of subjects and they're really lessons. It's 50, almost 50 lessons now that uh, cover all sorts of things. So that's a great thing for those of you that don't know about it. But if you do want to ask a Ask Sean a question and, and you just want to know about what you should do in a situation, go to that Ask Sean a tab and there you'll find a form and you can fill it out and submit it. And I will get your question and I will answer your question. All right. So that's it. And great job, Nicole. You're, you're doing great. And, and, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye for now.